Good evening and welcome to a very special WDSU News Hot Seat. Tonight we're talking about the Olympics. We all know they start later this week. We have some very special guests here. Leif Nordgren is joining us live via Zoom from the Athletes Village in Beijing, China. He does biathlon. Also, his beautiful wife, Caitlin Nordgren, she joins us live from Vermont. They have an incredible story we're going to get to. But first off, Leif, while we have you, tell us, this is an Olympic Games like no other. You just landed all of the protocols, quarantines. How unusual is it to go through something like this as you're going through the experience of a lifetime? Yeah, it's very strange. Um, one of the nice things is that, you know, this is going into the second year of the pandemic. So we've kind of been used to a lot of this stuff, um, just traveling for our normal World Cup circuit over the last year and a half or so. Um, but yeah, there's definitely been a lot of extra hoops to, uh, to jump through on our way to Beijing. Um, I just did my first, uh, my first of the daily PCR tests that we have to do every single day here while we're in uh, Beijing. So um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely pretty extra and pretty special, but um, yeah, it's, it's the Olympics and it's, it's just one of the things you have to do uh, to be here. So. So first off, we're here in the South, South Louisiana, just to bring everybody up to speed. Biathlon is the combination of cross country skiing and shooting. We're a sportsman's paradise. People are familiar with shooting here. Maybe not so much cross country skiing. This isn't your first rodeo. This is your third Olympics. You were in Pyeongchang in 18, Sochi back in 14. If you could talk about just the athletes village right now, I know there's dividers. You mentioned the PCR test. Is that going to be something that all the athletes have to go through? And is it a concern if somebody does, unfortunately, test positive? Yeah, so they have some pretty strict protocols here. Um, yeah, like I said, PCR tests every day. Um, the dining hall, there's, there's basically individual dividers for every athlete who's in the dining hall. So you're not really coming face to face um, with many other athletes. Um, they have, if, if someone does perchance test positive, they have separate um, quarantine locations for housing for those athletes. And then they have other separate locations for um, close contact athletes of people who do test positive. So um, I believe if you test positive, you're not allowed to compete. If you are a close contact, you're still allowed to compete and go to training and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, it should work out okay. I haven't heard of too many athletes testing positive so far. Of course, I've only been here for 24 hours. Um, but, and I uh, take it, just yeah, it's, it's the same protocols here, wear a mask, social distance, because the last thing you want to do is get bounced from an event at the 11th hour here. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, we're, you know, Team USA for sure is pretty separated. I'm not sure how other uh, nations are doing it, but yeah, we're in the biathlon team, at least we're pretty separated and insulated from other teams also. All right, Leif, don't go far. We're going to talk to your wife, wife here, Caitlin. Full disclosure, Caitlin works for our WDSU sister station, WPTZ in upstate New York and all of Vermont. She's in Vermont right now. She's a meteorologist at that station. The reason we have Caitlin on here for everybody watching is because you all have such a special story, I think, to share. You all are expecting your first child. And Caitlin, I'll let you take it away. When is the due date, if you'd like to tell all of our viewers? The due date is very ironically the day of the opening ceremony. So it's coming up very quickly here. I think we're five days away. So Friday is our due date, February 4th, which, yeah, or the opening, yeah, it's the same day as the opening ceremony. So it could be between now and then, or, you know, while Leaf's competing a couple of days later. So two very big events for us that are coinciding pretty much at the exact same time. <laughs> so the, the Olympics are on WDSU. We are hoping to expect a lot of people to watch as they will all across the country right here. If you can talk from a human aspect for this, how do you all go through something like this? How do you deal with it? I mean, Leaf, obviously you're representing the country competing and Caitlin, you're at home about to give birth to your first child, which is such a, a, a huge thing in yeah. life. If you could just talk about that, how have you guys planned this and what do you plan to do, Caitlin, when you do go into labor, which is going to be a couple of days here? Yeah, it could be any time. I think uh, our plan right now, uh, we've tried to approach, I mean, we've known obviously for a long time that this was going to be roundabouts the time that LEAF would be at the Olympics. And so it's something that we've prepared for. 
um, emotionally this entire nine months during my nine month journey now. And so I think we're both pretty much on board with the fact that this is how it was going to pan out. So I don't think it's anything that's, um, you know, we're just really prepared for it. So I think whenever I do go into labor, I'll just give Leaf a call or a text, depending on what he's doing. The 13 hour time change is going to be, um, a big challenge, but, um, yeah, I mean, when he's not training and he's not competing, I think from what I understand, he'll have a lot of downtime. So hopefully the baby comes during that time and hopefully our connection is good. And, and my, my mom is here to help me out and he trusts her completely. So, our plan has been set for a really long time now, and I think we're both really comfortable with it. And the only real concern for me is just getting a hold of him, I guess, when it's time. You know, I, I hope to at least talk to him a couple times, you know, while I'm in labor and things like that. And then obviously immediately after. Yeah, let's point this out. We're talking right now, Sunday night. Mm-hmm. It's Monday, probably mid morning there in Beijing. Leave if you can talk about that. I mean, it's a great answer by Caitlin, but. Obviously, you're competing for your country. You're representing the United States in something that you love to do and have so much passion for. How have you wrapped your mind around all of this? Because obviously, it's already difficult enough for an Olympic athlete to just get to where you are, be a member of Team USA and focus. And you're also focusing on your wife delivering your first child. Yeah, so one of the things I've really realized in the last nine months that Caitlin has been pregnant is... You know, obviously sport and biathlon is something that's very important to me. Um, But now that our family is going to be expanding it, it kind of shows you the things that really matter in life. Um, So I'm, you know, we're obviously both super excited. Um, The biggest worry for me, like Caitlin said, is, is going to be, you know, kind of connectivity. If, if the Wi-Fi is going to be working out super well here, um, you know, I'm going to have my phone on me. 24 seven, obviously for, for when that call comes, but I, you know, for me, I just hope that the connection works when it does come. Yeah. I think if you tell somebody, my wife's in labor, I need to see her. Somebody in Beijing is going to find you a connection. If you can just address this to leaf, the birth of a child is second to night. I have two small children myself. I know first off, you guys are not finding out, which is a special thing. You won't know if it's a boy or a girl, but if you could talk about this, The birth of your child makes 2022 a special year for you all. If you can put an Olympic medal on top of that and you come back with bronze, silver, gold, I know how important that is for you and your family. How great would that be for you all this year if it's the birth of a child and you get to return home and see your wife and child with an Olympic medal? Yeah, that would be um, that would be truly incredible. Um, you know, th- being that this is my third Olympics and my final Olympics, um, I'm I'm actually I'm really looking forward just to making it home to, to you know to meet the new little one. But yeah, if I could do that with with a medal or, or something like that, that would be um, that would be incredible. And Caitlin, I'm going to ask you the same question. You may be holding a two day old or three day old cheering on daddy in the Olympics here. How great will that be if you can watch him on that medal stand with a newborn? Gosh, I think, you know, the medal is obviously what he's there for, if that would be something that would work out. But I think just the fact that he's there and that he's made it, it's special for our family, you know, and I do, I'm, I am really looking forward to that moment of, yeah, holding my baby and and having, you know, babies aren't going to remember this or anything, but uh, as a two or three day old, but it will be really special for me to be able to have our baby there for while he's competing at the Olympics, you know, medal or not, we're going to be proud of him, obviously, no matter what we already are. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, you know, if he can't be here for the delivery of the child, I guess the Olympics is is the perfect excuse. And for the baby to technically get to see his, its little dad, or it's dad compete, then that would make it extra special in so many ways. So. All right, Caitlin, great answer. Leaf, we're going to leave it with you. Obviously your final thoughts. You're the one with your wife going through this process. We all talk about living in the moment. You all are definitely living in the moment here. You living out your Olympic dreams while you and your wife are about to bring your first child into the world. We'll leave it with you. Final thoughts here before we go for all of our viewers across Louisiana watching this right now we have so many people cheering on team usa and i think this just gives them another reason to cheer for you when biathlon comes on 
Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. Every single athlete has their own kind of special story going on. Um, so we're we're pretty lucky that you know we have we have these things going on in our lives. Um, but yeah, it's it's really kind of special just to be here in Beijing, and you know, I hope Team USA and biathlon especially can uh, can have a good Olympics. All right, Caitlin Nordgren, meteorologist at our sister station WPTZ. Best of luck with everything. Hopefully. Everything goes smoothly and you get good Wi-Fi when you try to reach your husband. <laughs> Leif Nordgren, from all of us here in Louisiana, we are all fans of Team USA. We're rooting hard for the Olympics and we're also rooting hard for you to get back home safely, hopefully with a medal, to your young child. All right, that's Great, all thanks, the time Travis. that we have for the hot seat with Leif Nordgren, who's joining us from Beijing, China, in the Athletes Village, and his wife, Caitlin Nordgren. We appreciate your time. I'm Travers Mackle. You can see this entire segment starting tomorrow morning at WDSU.com. And finally, we can all do it together. How about we get a Go Team USA? <laughs> Go Team USA. Go Team USA. <laughs> well, we have more of a reason to cheer on our team, right? When it comes to the Winter Games, WDSU is your home for all the action. Be sure to tune in to our Ozone Show, which airs Monday through Saturday at 6.30 p.m. throughout the Winter Games. We'll be right back.